Jake, let's talk about just in general the concentration of uh, petroglyphs, rock art that in this area. Um, why so much of it? And and could you give me a general description of uh, the amount of it and the resources compared to any anywhere else? Well, yeah, it, it, for eastern Nevada, the Pronagate Valley especially, has a large concentration of petroglyphs that are in a lot of different uh, areas. You'll see some that are down in the valleys, and you'll see some that will go up into different hunting areas. And they're really concentrated on family activity areas that not only do you have the rock art, but you have good representations of whatever activities are happening in there. You'll find milling slicks where they were grinding, say, pinion pine or uh, working on tools that you'll see a lot of the, uh, the after effects of where they're working on tools laying all over these sites and it represents that they were using them for a long period of time and in really kind of family type of groups. And does that explain why there's so much of it, such a concentration, because they would come here, family groups would be here over a period of time? Or? I would think that uh, you look at uh, the last 4,000 years and really when you look at the petroglyphs in Lincoln County, about 4,000 years ago roughly is where we're thinking that they started to 500 years ago. There was a real fluorescence in there about 2,000 years ago where there's a lot of evidence that people were coming through here in family groups to get resources in the Pronagate Valley. It would have been a paradise. There would have been just, uh, you know, with the lakes there, just incredible hunting and plant foods and, and social activities that they could have come into the region and maybe stayed for a season and then moved to a different area. And uh, we're talking about different groups from different parts of the, of the Southwest. Then. Potentially, I mean, when you look at the rock art that we call Basin and Range Tradition, that that uh, abstract that you saw a lot of at Mount Irish, that's a very uh, unique uh, type of rock art. And you could probably attribute that to a group of people. But then we also have uh, other groups like the Fremont coming in from Utah that have a totally different type of artistic style. They use a lot of paint and other things like that that is very distinctive. And then there's also groups that came from, say, the Colorado area, the Puebloan groups, that there's, uh, you know, their rock art, it's shown with shields and things that are totally different than what you would see, what we would call the basin and range tradition. So definitely when you look at Lincoln County and Pronagate Valley in particular, it is a very much crossroads that there's a lot of different groups that were working and living and, and, and surviving in that area for What's the time thousand frame years. of the oldest ones that you know of that are here? And I, I recognize it's it's tricky to, to date this stuff, right? Yeah, I, you know, absolute dating is very difficult. Uh, there are some interpretations then of what an atlatl, a spear thrower, is as far as a motif. And you would suggest then that as a motif, that would be prior to the bow and arrow. So the bow and arrow showed up about 1,500 years ago. So then looking at that, then people are looking at the desert varnish that's on these that you can see that some of them are very old and then some not so much that there's different patinas on them. And with that, uh, you know, roughly 4,000 years ago is a good estimate, but it is an estimate. Uh, people coming into the region, you know, there's evidence from 12,000 years ago that they were coming into the Pronagate Valley and some of the lakes. and in those areas. Um, the interpretation of what the images mean gets pretty tricky. Yeah, and what do they say? Art is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> you know, some motifs are very obvious. The bighorn sheep in Mount Irish, that is one of the highest concentrations in all of Nevada of that sheep motif where you have the bighorn sheep. But then you get into the more abstract figures, say the Pronagate man, and you know, you can look at that some of them are the circular figure. Some of them are in the box rectangular uh, uh, figure. And, you know, those are obviously human forms. But then you go from there, and what do the other things mean? I mean, 
you know, the atlatl, like I said before, uh, celestial bodies with a big circle, very uh, complex. But, I mean, one person's interpretation is as good as another, I guess. At this point. You know, you can't talk to the person who made it. <laughs> So I'm not uh, one to say that you're wrong in your interpretation. People have been studying and researching rock art uh, for a long time. And of course you have the Native Americans that uh, this rock art is very important to their heritage and their cultural, their cultures. So with that in mind, then uh, yeah, it is. Uh, Paranagat man, that, those images, that, that exists here and nowhere else, right? It is a unique uh, motif, both the, uh, you know, you do have pattern bodied uh, uh, elsewhere, but then the circular body with the big eyes, that's very unique to the Pranagat Valley and, you know, some of the r ridges and, and uh, fans that go off of that. Uh, what is it? The shaman? The Pranagat man? I mean, shaman could be a possibility, uh, hunting magic, you know, um, I think about uh, the the human form, you know, some of them are families. You have maybe a male and maybe a female and then a smaller child that you can look at them as a family group. So I think it's really a, a social marker. And if you think about, you know, the ability to go and say, this was your father's father's figure and he made that hundred years ago that would be really important to you you look at some of it and it looks like wow this guy really knew what he was doing or this gal knew what he was doing she was doing and some of it looks amateur amateuristic and um, we don't really know though I mean it might have been abstract art it might have been impressionism uh, uh, their version of it uh, you don't really know. and as we know you know my stick figures are hard to interpret so there's a level of genius with some of the artists, obviously, in Lincoln County, that you look at those motifs and those that art, and it is art, and it is incredible. And then you look at others and, oh, yeah. That one panel uh, that we saw uh, near the springs with the whole family on one mm -hmm. rock, oh, my, that, they, that took some time. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about it, you know, they could use that area for a season. They could go somewhere else, maybe for a year, two years, come back to that. And that would be just a really important place to them. And it would have been, you know, a part of their life. It's a part of their knowledge. We had heard stories that Paranagat uh, was Garden of Eden for some Paiute, some tribes, that they thought it was the first place where the first members of their, their tribe uh, came into the world. Have you heard that story? Yeah, and uh, definitely it's a very important place for all Na Native Americans that were using this region, uh, the Shoshone, the Paiute, uh, there's a lot of groups that we talk to in the Bureau of Land Management uh, and consult with on a government to government basis for any projects that we might do. And, you know, you look at really the Pranagat Valley and what's there right now with the water resources in a place like Lincoln County, you know, that's been a very important place to a lot of people for thousands of years. Uh, protection. Uh, of the resources. I mean, they're irreplaceable. You can't have somebody go out there with spray paint or um, stealing it with a rock and a chisel, but I guess you got to worry about that, don't you? Yeah, cultural resource protection is probably the most important part of my job as an archaeologist, and we take it very seriously. Uh, with our public sites, like my Mount Irish, when you go there, there's brochures that will interpret the area. And then there's also protection brochures that say how to treat the area. You know, don't touch the rock art and, and uh, leave only footprints, take only pictures. And they talk about the etiquette of those sites, and that's very important. It's tricky for BLM, though. You want people to enjoy those resources and appreciate what's there. But I guess a party has to worry about, oh, my gosh, too many people know about it. Something bad could happen. Yeah, and, you know, a public site like Mount Irish, uh, it's hard to get to, and not everybody's going to go up there. But uh, we're doing different things like 3D modeling, Mount Irish on a project right now. That's going to you're going to be able to look at the different motifs as a 3D model, and people in New York City or throughout the world can go and enjoy a place like that. So, again, 
the education of cultural resource management is very important. A big thing that we do, and I think one of the sites that you went to was Crystal Wash, which is another of our public sites. One of the best things that I did, I've only been here a year and a half, is uh, take uh, 33rd, 4th, and 5th graders to uh, the Crystal Wash area. 